Hi there. Forecasting time series is always trivial on theory books. However, when you're dealing with real life business data, it can be a real nightmare. In this video, I will show you the four most common challenges when dealing with time series and how to tackle them. Hi there, I'm Calvin Fernandez, co-founder and CEO of Neil AI, and welcome to another AI shot. In this one, I will talk to you about the most common challenges when working with time series. So what is a time series? A time series is basically like taking a picture of the world, you know, taking a picture a month ago, another one last month, another one this month, another one next month, etc. And then asking yourself, how will the world look like in the next period? Okay, so it's like taking continuous snapshots of your universe and your universe can be your business, a world, a sensor, etc. And then trying to understand, trying to predict what will be the next value, the next image you will observe. Okay, let me just show you some examples of time series, for example, having you know these historical records of the weather and then trying to predict if tomorrow is going to rain or not or having the opening and closing price of a certain financial asset and then trying to predict how will this asset close in the next day or for example having energy prices and predicting how are they going to move or having a you know a vital signal from a patient and understanding how the patient will progress in the next in the next period okay all of these are examples of time series so it's a very common use case or it's a very common type of data when you're working with ai on real life and the main issue here is that you know the methods that are are out there basically ignore mo most of the challenges that are implicit when dealing with time series and in this video i will show you the, these challenges and how can you tackle them so let's start with the first one which is basically non-stationary uh, values or seasonalities what do I mean by having a, 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 a time series that is non-stationary? It's basically a time series, for example, that is exhibiting a, thre a, a trend. For example, this one here that is always growing, okay? Or by seasonalities, I mean, you know, when you have these cycles where something appears to, re to be repeating once, one after the other. And this is the most common challenge you will see. Actually, most of the tools that are out there already deal with these, um, with these issues. And from a technical point of view, you know, it's quite easy what you have to do. Basically, just use these kind of models that can deal with seasonality, for example, Sarima, um, or these kind of techniques. And for the trend, for the non-stationary uh, non-stationary part, just try to detrend your time series. For example, instead of forecasting the actual value on the next period, okay, which will be at a value that is out of your training data, try to predict, you know, what is going to be the the shift what is going to be the, the variation with respect to the previous period. So if you take like this variation, which is kind of the gradient, okay, you will basically have a time series that is actually just stationary, okay? So that is basically from a technical point of view what you have to do. From a business point of view, what you need to do is basically to pass this know-how to your team. You know, like we have these seasonalities, for example, let's say you, are, you have a disco, okay, or, or a bar. You know that you have a seasonality, that is intraday, okay, so it's inside your day, which is, you know, people go to bars more at night and at day, than during the day. Then you have weekdays versus weekends, okay, and then you have uh, some certain yearly seasonality, like, or monthly seasonality, like, you know, people go to discos, let's say, more on summer than on winter, for example. If you already have this know-how, communicate it to your team so they can adjust the kind of seasonalities that they will be looking at depending on the type of pattern that they want to detect, okay? Once they know that, it will, it will be quite easy for them to, to decide what kind of technique to apply and to decide with respect to time, which interval to detrend the, the time series because sometimes you are observing a trend, but it's just a local trend. If you, if you look at, at the long-term picture, it's not actually just a trend, it's an stationary time series. So try to talk with between business and technical teams about about the know-how you have on your on your actual domain so you can validate these assumptions. Okay. So this is the first challenge, but most likely you already knew about it because it's quite common. So let's move to the second one. Okay. The second one is having missing data. Okay. And in general, when data scientists look at missing data, their fur their first hunch is just to fill in that missing data, to input that missing data. And in general, with time series, this can be wrong, okay? This can be a wrong assumption, because here the main assumption that people make is like, you know, there was an issue with transmission with the storage of the data point. So like, like this value in the middle here actually existed, but in reality, having missing data most times in business means 
that there was a certain change on the business there there was a certain you know issue with the actual target that you wanted to predict let me give you an example for example let's say that you want to forecast if there will be a failure on a machine okay and you have a sensor measuring the energy output of that machine okay if you have a missing data most likely it's because the sensor failed because the machine also failed okay so inputting this value here and putting here an average of this value will actually bias your your or will actually remove valuable information that you have in your data just because it's easier or because models need to input this data most likely you know if, if you are a data scientist what you will do is on these cases is you know just forward forecasting this value and inputting here this value here or just doing an interpolation and inputting the final value on this location. Again, most times doing this, you know, uh, interpolation or forward forecasting uh, will remove valuable data. Okay, so my my suggestion here is talk with your business partners, understand if this value here, for example, shouldn't be, you know, forward interpolated to this average but to a zero for example because the machine wasn't working there so if the machine wasn't working here this is the actual pattern that you want to detect okay from a business point of view try to validate with your technical team how are they handle these kind of missing values okay so here again communication is key how? communication try to if you are you know managing a technical team on a problem with time series forecasting talk to them you know do you have missing data you know where what are you doing with this kind of missing values let's go to the sensor and inspect what can be going on there so we can actually attribute the right the, the, the right semantics to this to this data okay so let's move now to the third challenge which is time doesn't exist okay and this can be kind of surprising that in, in a technique such as time series forecasting the concept of time doesn't exist or at least doesn't exist in the in the way we understand it okay so we understand time as a continuous thing you know that you know i can ask you about the weather forecast tomorrow or next week or in the next 30 minutes it's not like stepwise okay in time series we often assume that the that the input data that the sequence is uh, equally spaced so i have let's say a reading per day or a reading per month or a reading per hour and in real life data that doesn't happen for example let's let me show you an example with a univariate uh, time series so we, only with a single variable let's say that you have a manual water meter okay so you you are a utility company and sometimes you have some inspectors going out there to the field ma making some reader some readings out of the water mirrors from the, your clients and putting those values in the contract sometimes the clients call you and, and make a report on their actual value and you invoice them based on that these inputs these readings won't come at even intervals okay sometimes you know your inspector only visits a certain region every three months and sometimes they miss that region sometimes your your client you know reports that on the middle of the week sometimes by the end of the month etc sometimes they don't even do it so it's quite common to have more continuous readings or more um, uneven readings and most if not all uh, general or most well-known techniques for handling time series will assume that readings are on equal uh, times okay so for for these techniques like time is more like a like chess okay first you play then the other one then the other one then the other one it's like one by one it's not actually a continuous measurement and this also happens even if you have even measurements like daily weekly etc but you have multiple sensors with multiple granularity for example you have the daily consumption from a user but then only the monthly billing okay so you have diff uneven uh, or you have different frequencies for the sampling and so th this is a very common issue and um what you can do here is and most people do, do, do actually this is first of all interpolating this at equal intervals okay at even intervals same thing here okay and then trying to aggregate basically like interpolation or um, like doing some imputation of, of what will be the value here okay so i will put here interpolation will be the the most common way uh, interpolation of the values or an aggregation of the value aggregation if you're aggregating here and from a business perspective also you need to pass this know-how try to understand what is the right way to aggregate 
Sometimes people do just like the average or just an interpolation of the value. But depending on the kind of readings you have, maybe this is not the, the best thing to do. For example, if I tell you that here is an invoice and here is another invoice, the actual consumption of the client here in the middle was not the average of these two, was actually zero, right? Because the client didn't have any invoice here in the middle. So what value you put in there is kind of tricky. Um, the same thing if you are, you know, if I'm placing the value, you know, if I am reporting this value here, for example, and I am interpolating that value as the results of this one, and let's say this is consumption patterns, then maybe I want to sum all the all the consumption and not just average the consumption. So even the kind of aggregation you do need to be needs to be validated with the business. But I will give you a better idea. So instead of answering the question here, let me just move this part. So a time series is basically going is, is basically answering this question. Um, what's uh, the value of the time series in the next cycle? In the next in the next step okay instead of doing this which is a general assumption on time series you know you have even steps you can try to model the following thing um when and how much will be the next reading the next reading so basically, and instead of predicting what is going to be the value on a, on a next step, I'm asking my model, you know, I have this input data here, when I am going to have the next reading and what's going to be the value, you know, how much will be the value. For example, when will my customer buy the next, will do the next transaction? Well, and how much will be that transaction? Or when will the customer uh, make the next uh, reading of the of the water meter and what will be the, the reading out of it okay so you 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 change this problem into a problem where you actually have sequential data because each reading now will be will be sequential right so each reading will be like a single step okay step one is the first reading step two is the second reading step three is the third reading but now the instead of time being time here time is readings and the value is actually time and the actual value of the sensor, okay? And here you can use any sequential model like recurrent neural networks, LSTMs, or even time series forecasting general models like Arima, Sarima, Hot Winters, Moving Averages, whatever you want to do. It's just that now you have to predict two values, when and how, and how much. In the same way that I can put the when as an outcome, I can say that the when is an input, you know? and as the model the value of this time series so the how much you know how much money will they have to pay for this asset etc in three months from now or in two days from now okay so the way to train this is you will digest all the readings and you know the value of the next reading so you will input that and you predict you you try to understand how much when do you want to use one or the other well, basically, you will you want to use this version of it where you input the when when you have some control out of this variable, okay? Where you can say, you know, uh, let's say I will pay a visit to the client, how much will be the, re the reading on the water meter? So when you control the time of the reading, you want to model the time series as having the when on, on the input. When you cannot control the when, for example, whenever the client is doing the next transaction, how much will be that transaction? and when it will happen, so you don't control when the client will buy your product, then you want to model it as you know, your inputs, and then when and how much, okay? You want to predict when will it happen and how much will be the value if you cannot control the readings. If you can control the readings, go for the first strategy, and this will solve all your issues, you know, with undersampling, oversampling, interpolating these values, and you will still be able to use traditional uh, time series forecasting models from a business perspective, you will need to pass this information. If you can or you cannot control the time of the reading or if that is relevant for to your decision making process and what is the cost you know, of, of, this, of this dispersion, okay? And now let's move to our final challenge. But well, before that, remember to like this video if you like it so far, okay? So the final challenge, which is the most tricky one, 
is changes on business. Okay, so let's say that you have this time series here and you can easily see that at this point, somewhere here, there was a change on business, right? So first we have like this kind of behavior and then we started having this other path, okay? So what can you do in this case? What most people do is they just discard all data, okay? So basically they manually identify when this happens, they visualize it, the time series, and they say, you know, here there was a change, uh, my old data uh, is, is you know, garbage, I will just discard it. The main issue with this is that from time to time, your your AI will stop working and you will need you know to ramp up the learning again, you will need to wait until it is okay. Another issue is that you need to manually identify this, okay? So it's very subjective. There is no like an easy rule to say, you know, here there was a change on business, okay? Another way to do this is, you know, people just to say, you know what, let's the machine learn and so do, do nothing. So basically let, let's allow the machine to learn this pattern itself and to correct itself and to understand that the old data was not relevant and the new data is relevant, okay? Again, you are having here some business information that you are not passing to your to your network, to your machine, to your to, to your model, and you can. And so this is what people do. What I suggest you to do is to provide context. Provide context to the net to the model. What do I mean by, by providing context? Most likely these changes can be measured by some contextual data, by some external data, by some market data. Let's put those variables into the model. For example, when COVID arrived, you know, mobility patterns changed. So if you were looking, for example, for a demand forecasting on flight tickets, then of course you had a drop and the, the models were not informed of this drop. But if you include an external variable, let's say um, Google searches for flights, or let's say, let's say how many people was visiting your website, then you will for sure look that uh, observe that there was a drop so having this contextual data will actually allow your model to learn that whenever there is a drop on searches on google then there will be a drop on the demand for flight tickets okay same thing for example for a uh, financial asset let's say that the financial you know the the market i don't know there was a, a scandal you know let's try to put the scandal information as some part of your input data so it, the model is aware of these kind of external factors, of these business changes on businesses, so it can prevent it. It can, you know, keep working after the, those things happen. The main challenge here is understanding, you know, forward-looking where are going to be the potential changes on business that you want to measure and input them to your model, so your model stay robust to these kind of changes. From a business perspective, what you have to do here is to identify these external factors that are relevant and to communicate again communicate communication here is critical communicate to your technical team any expected change before they happen so if you know that six months from now you will launch a new product or you will you know change a feature in your product then let's let's communicate about that you know let's talk about that with your team let's talk let's tell them you know in six months there will be a change the change is going to be with respect to price or with respect to you know a new version of the product so let's add versioning here as a relevant feature for your model so your model understands that whenever there is a change on price you will observe that churn levels increase or whenever there is a new feature you will observe that conversion rates increase Okay, so communicate with your team, identify these external variables that maybe your team is not considering as now for their forecasting tools. And let's try to put this together such that they are not new unexpected changes, but they are just part of, of the new context that is already uh, involved in the, in the modeling itself. Okay, so these are the four most common challenges that we will observe. This is how can you handle them. This is how we have successfully do it in the past at Neil AI. Tell me what are your challenges that are your, that you are facing on your time series forecasting project and how are you solving them. I am looking forward to, to see you on the next on the next video. See you soon. Bye bye.